balancing the brain is something that's more often than not overlooked by a lot of practitioners. They often start with the gut or candida or mold or Lyme, and they totally forget about our neurotransmitters. And the truth is that a lot of our symptoms that we're experiencing, anxiety, depression, low mood, low drive, ADHD, sometimes even what we think are hormonal imbalances. So PMS is actually a neurotransmitter imbalance. Now there's really some key neurotransmitters that we're going to talk about today. One being dopamine. Dopamine is the drive and motivation, the get up and go, the stay focused neurotransmitter. Too little dopamine often leads to lack of motivation, the feeling of not wanting to do anything, procrastinating, not being able to stay focused. And high dopamine looks like very high drive, hyper focus in excessive amounts can lead to mania and other uh, very severe uh, psych psychiatric symptoms, which we're not going to go into here, we're going to like kind of stay a little bit more in the middle. But we don't really know what the symptom is and what the cause is based on that symptom. So let's take ADHD. I could be described as somebody who is very, very ADHD in certain situations. If you were to stick me in a classroom and I had to listen to somebody speak, I would have trouble sitting still. I would have trouble focusing. I'd probably be daydreaming and I'd likely be doodling or doing something and paying no attention. And most people would say, well, that's got to be low dopamine, right? And it's not, I have incredibly high levels of dopamine, but I get bored incredibly easy. If you're not speaking fast enough, if I'm not interested in the topic, or sometimes I have to have multiple things on the go in order to keep my brain focused because it has the ability to do a lot of things and it gets bored very, very easily. So without running labs, is your dopamine high? Is it low? We don't know. And we can't go by symptoms. And then another really important neurotransmitter is going to be serotonin. Serotonin, when in balance, is that feel-good neurotransmitter. And when it's low, it normally looks like apathy, low mood. It can lead to aggression and anger, rage. All of that can be due to low serotonin. Also can be due to high dopamine. <laughs> now, when serotonin goes too high, which is not a good thing either, it can lead to anxiety and hyperfocus and paranoia, which sounds a lot like high dopamine, which is which we don't know, right? And it's the importance of running your genetics and labs and checking. GABA is another very important neurotransmitter. When it's imbalanced, you feel very relaxed and peaceful. And it's what we normally feel when we're drinking wine or uh, taking any of the calming herbs we are trying to increase our GABA. And when GABA is low, you're going to feel anxious and you're going to often have very racing thoughts. You might not be able to sleep at night because your brain just keeps going and going. When GABA is too high, which normally doesn't really happen unless you're taking some sort of medication, it could be sleep. Like you're going to be very tired and sleepy and you're going to want to go to bed. Now, what is actually the opposite end of the coin with GABA is actually glutamate because glutamine converts into GABA and obviously becomes glutamic acid in the brain, which is very excitatory. And we need that to turn on in the morning and get us up to go and function and have energy. It's, it's a brain fuel. And if that is low, then we're not going to have that excitement to go and do things. If our glutamate gets very high, and oftentimes that can happen when people are doing like a lot of MSG or they have a GAB mutation, then their body is not able to convert glutamine into GABA and they can have really bad headaches. They can have uh, migraines, seizures, all sorts of things can happen when that glutamic acid goes too high in the brain. So you might have noticed that so far there's this underlying trend of balance. It's not about having a ton of dopamine uh, or having a ton of serotonin. We want it to be in balance in the brain. And acetylcholine is another big one. It is where we get our memory function from. If we don't have enough acetylcholine, then we're not going to have really great memory function. Too much can lead to anxiety and um, hyperactivity. So we don't, again, want that to be too high or too low. So what we want to do is run our genetics and an organic acids test, and we want to take a look at how is our brain breaking down our neurotransmitters. 
So we have a mutation called COMT, which is what breaks down your dopamine. So for somebody like me, I have multiple mutations on multiple genes. So I'm COMT++, which means I'm prone to very high levels of dopamine. And I'm also monoamine oxidase minus minus, which means I'm prone to very low levels of serotonin. So by knowing that, I know what support my brain needs and what I need to do to come into balance. Now, somebody could be COMT minus minus and be prone to very low dopamine and be monoamine oxidase plus plus and be prone to high serotonin. And the key is to know. Without knowing, if you went and took 5-HTP, which is the precursor, the direct building block to serotonin, and your monoamine oxidase plus plus, and you give yourself too much serotonin, you are going to feel a lot worse. So it's very, very important to run your labs. Now, when it comes to COMT in particular, it's very important when it comes to taking things like methylfolate. So a lot of people are looking into MTHFR and or they're assuming they have it without even testing. And then they're starting to take uh, B complexes or multivitamins that have MTHFR, MTHF in it. So methylfolate or methyl B12. And when you have one or more um, COMT mutations, then you are going to cause a lot of anxiety. You can even cause yourself to become manic, uh, which happens for me. If, if I need to clean my house or do something when we move, I'll take like, I'll pop a MTHFR and methyl B12 lozenge and boom, I'll go for three days nonstop. So I am incredibly sensitive to methyl donors. And it's really important to not only look at the brain and what the brain needs, but also look at the detox pathways. Some people need methyl donors for their detox pathways, but their brain says, no, thank you. Thankfully, I'm one of those people who my brain says, no, thank you. And my liver detox pathways also say, no, thank you. So I do not need a lot of methyl donors, but we want to look at the entire picture and not just our brain. Whenever we're trying to balance our brain, we also need to be looking at these other nutrients because in order for our brain to need to make its neurotransmitters, it needs cofactors. So things like magnesium and P5P and zinc and in particularly with dopamine, we can really build dopamine levels with methyl donors. So when we look at the full picture, we can really balance our brain and work on our detox pathways properly at the same time. Now, the other factor that comes with our neurotransmitters is you could have all the cofactors. So what the enzymes need to make the neurotransmitters, and you can have all the precursors, what your body literally takes the amino acid and then converts it into the neurotransmitter, you can have all of that and still have a very unbalanced brain. And that's because there can be something blocking neurotransmitter formation. So that can be things like oxalates, ammonia, pathogens. And a really big one is going to be any it, it's anything that's going to deplete the BH4, which is is really ammonia. And I'm seeing such a, a huge issue with this right now and oxalates because people are moving to these low carb diets. So they're cutting out the carbohydrates, but they still want to make all these cool baking things. And what do they do? They're they're pumping up their almond flour. They're starting to eat a lot of spinach. They've cut out the dairy, so they don't even have the calcium to bind to the oxalates. They are eating dark chocolate instead of milk chocolate, and they're driving up their oxalates, and they're driving up their sulfur, they're driving up their ammonia, and they cannot make their neurotransmitters. And then they start to see a lot of dysfunctions there. So really, really important, go and order an ancestry test, find a practitioner, get your organic acids and your blood work because these foundation labs are going to tell you what your brain needs and what your detox pathways need and really what your entire body needs to create a foundation to start to heal on and to start to bring your body into balance. So if you're looking for a practitioner, go to my website, www.sgintegrativehealing.com. You can also learn all about genetics, all about neurotransmitters and detox pathways in my book, Heal Yourself, which you can find on Amazon, Audible, and Kindle.